Kung Fu, or Gung Fu, Gung meaning merit or skill, and Fu meaning to master, so the mastery of a skill, is the oldest, most famous, and most diverse martial art in human history, and many of its sub-styles are incredibly popular and influential all by themselves, like Wing Chun, Baji Quan, Shaolin Kung Fu, and Drunken Fist. Likely due to its history and influence, Kung Fu has been an icon of martial arts for hundreds of years, so of course when it comes to things like martial arts anime and manga, it sees no end to its representation. Go ahead and sit down to eat a retsu cooked meal or a sum zan zhuang, and enjoy as I explain one of Grappler Baki's most well-represented and most powerful martial arts, the 4,000 years of Chinese Kenpo. Chinese martial arts are the oldest codified system of fighting techniques in the world, with origins dating back to the Xia Dynasty 4,000 years ago, and it trains both unarmed and armed techniques for the purposes of self-defense, physical exercise, and meditation. So yes, when Retsu talks about the 4,000 years of Chinese Kung Fu, he's not just making that up. The Yellow Emperor, Huang Di, who became emperor in 2698 BC, was a famous general before ascending to the throne, and as a general, he compiled a written record of his knowledge on a great many things stemming from his experience as a wartime leader, including martial arts such as Jiao Di, or hornbutting, a technique he used in war. This was the first known record of Chinese martial arts. Before even the first year of AD, there were dozens of ancient styles of Kung Fu such as Shobu, which was practiced during the Shang Dynasty from 1766 BC to 1066 BC, and Shang Bo, a style similar to the modern Sanda dating back to the 600s BC, after 509 BC, over a thousand years before Shaolin, when Confucius suggested to Duke Ding of Lu that common people be allowed to study literature and practice martial arts, Kung Fu saw an explosion of popularity, with a wrestling Kung Fu style called Jiao Li that included strikes, throws, joint manipulation, and pressure point attacks having been created at some point prior to 1 BC due to its being mentioned in the Classic of Rites written that year, and the Yellow Emperor's Jiao Di becoming a sport during the Qin Dynasty of 221 BC to 207 BC. At this point, martial arts was similar to, say, Pankration, where the lethal techniques one would use in war were the same employed in combat for entertainment, but we have Kung Fu to thank for our modern interpretation of combat sports, as, according to the Han history bibliographies, during the former Han from 206 BC to 8 AD, Kung Fu was split into two categories. Shobu, no holds barred weaponless fighting, and Jiao Li, sport of wrestling, though wrestling had already been recorded in the Shi Ji, or the records of the Grand Historian, which was written by Sima Qian in 100 BC. The story of the Maiden of Yue in the Spring and Autumn Annals of Wu and Yue, written in 5 BC, is also likely the oldest recorded mention of the concept of soft internal martial arts and hard external martial arts. So the very foundational separation between soft and hard martial arts is also owed to Kung Fu. The Tang Dynasty saw Kung Fu sword dancing recorded by famous poet Li Bai. The Song and Yuan Dynasties saw the advent of sumo wrestling in its earliest form, a contest called Shang Pu. The origins of modern Wushu date back to the Ming and Qing Dynasties. Kung Fu was at the center of most every major Chinese philosopher's works such as the text Zhuangzi, written by the Taoist Zhuangzi in 4 BC, and the Tao Te Ching, written by the famous Laozi. Kung Fu was part of the six most important arts practiced during the Zhao Dynasty from 1122 BC to 256 BC, particularly archery and charioteering. And of course, Sun Tzu's Art of War is quite possibly the most famous and well-studied book of martial arts ever. The list of Kung Fu's impact on martial arts and history, and the length of Kung Fu's history before even the first year of AD goes on. Kung Fu is so influential and iconic because it's intrinsically tied to the entire history of one of the longest lived and most successful civilizations in human history. Like the aforementioned sumo, a lot of martial arts styles we have today find their roots in the long storied history of Chinese martial arts and philosophy, such as Qigong and Tai Chi, Kung Fu styles in of themselves, coming from Taoist exercises called Tao Ying from 500 BC, Pang Ku writing a record of the former Han Dynasty's history in a book called the Han Shu in 39 92 AD, where he wrote six chapters of hand fighting, and animal styles likely being rooted in the Five Animals play written by Hua Tuo in 220 BC. One of the most famous examples of a mix of spiritual and religious philosophy in Chinese martial arts is, of course, Shaolin Kung Fu and the monks that practice it. The oldest evidence of Shaolin warrior monks fighting is a steel from 728 AD that describes two instances in which the monks had to use their martial arts to fight in battles. 
ones in 610 AD where the Shaolin Temple had to defend itself from a bandit invasion, and the Battle of Hulao in 621 AD where they helped to defeat Wang Shichong. Beyond that, until the 16th and 17th century, there are no historically reliable sources that record Shaolin in combat, but during those two centuries, everybody in China must have had a murder boner, because the historical records of Shaolin using its martial arts in battle shot up to 40 different sources, proving beyond a shadow of a doubt that Shaolin Kung Fu was not only an effective style of martial arts for fighting, but that it might be one of the most effective styles to exist, benefiting from over 2,000 years of martial arts knowledge at the time of its inception alone. People began writing about the mighty martial arts Shaolin Kung Fu in the late Ming Dynasty, as well as famous Shaolin warrior monks, Shaolin Kung Fu's manuals, their wartime strategies, historical texts about Shaolin, and even fictional stories and poems. But all these works actually say that Shaolin warrior monks describe Shaolin Kung Fu as a mishmash of other styles rather than one specific style created by Shaolin, and speak mostly of their armed martial arts such as with their signature staff weapons as opposed to the Tang era focusing on their unarmed techniques. Kung Fu really started to influence martial arts on a global scale, particularly East Asia regions like Okinawa and Korea, when a general from the Ming Dynasty, Qi Ji Guang, included descriptions of Shaolin Quan Fa, or fist principles, and staff techniques in his book, Ji Xiao Shin Shu, new book recording effective techniques, and said book began to spread across Asia. It's hard to know what exactly Shaolin Kung Fu was like back then, as many records have been lost to time or destroyed when the Chinese Communist Party burned down the Shaolin temples. But modern Shaolin is greatly influenced by what remained of their prior history in addition to newer styles such as Bagua, Drunken Boxing, Eagle Fist, Five Animals, Sing Yi, Hungar, Lao Gar, Monkey, Bak Mei Pai, Praying Mantis, Fujian White Crane, Wing Chun, and Tai Chi Chuan all of which in turn are also influenced by old Shaolin Kung Fu. Throughout the 20th century, the Chinese government went from hating martial arts because people tried to use it to rebel, to hating it for its empowering the people against certain domineering political parties, to using it as a symbol of Chinese strength, culture, and tradition, but we're not really here to talk about the political history of China as much as Kung Fu. So let's talk about one of the most famous things about Kung Fu, its styles. For as long as Kung Fu has been around, you've got to imagine that everyone's got their own spin on it. And for one of the planet's most populated countries to have its people have a different spin on something for 4,000 years? You gotta know that there are a lot of different spins. This isn't a comprehensive list, but a list of different styles of Chinese martial arts includes the 8 Trigram Palm, Bagua Zhang, Ba Ji Quan, known for its explosiveness and elbows, Bak Mei, or White Eyebrow Kung Fu, Cheng Quan, also known as Long Fist, a style we'll discuss later in this video, Choi Li Foot, a substyle famous for its gambit of engagement ranges, Chuo Jiao, or Chinese Poking Foot, Dragon Kung Fu, Long Quan, Duan Quan, infamous for its close range combat and boxing, Eagle Claw Kung Fu and its grips, strikes, joint locks, takedowns, and pressure points, Fu Jiao Pai, or Tiger Claw style that emulates a tiger, the unorthodox and acrobatic Hao Quan, or Monkey Kung Fu, Hua Quan, Flower Boxing, Hung Ga, a low, powerful southern style that uses all five animal styles, Lama Pai, Lao Gar, the boxing style of the Quiling Temple, Bao Quan, or the agile and aggressive Leopard Kung Fu, Liu Hei Ba Fa, Six Harmonies, Eight Methods, Mei Hua Quan, or the Plum Flower Fist, not to be confused with Hua Quan, Flower Boxing, Lost Track Boxing, or Mizong Quan, Mok Gar and its short range grappling and leg kicks, Nan Quan, the legendary Praying Mantis Fist and its redirection, joint manipulation, pressure points, and trapping, Sansu, a short range self defense form, Sanda, a modern kung fu style that incorporates kung fu, kickboxing, Muay Thai, and specifically Shuai Jiao, Shuai Jiao being a folk wrestling style, the iconic Shaolin Kung Fu, Shi Quan, or Snake Kung Fu, the gentle meditative Tai Chi, the internal Wudang style Tai Yi Zhang or Liang Yi Quan, with all speeds of movements and bursts of power, White Crane Kung Fu or Bai He Quan, Wing Chun and its rapid strikes and trapping, the performative art of Wushu, Wuzu Quan or Five Ancestors Fist, another internal Wudang style Xing Yi Quan, known for its explosive power and linear movement, and finally Zui Quan or Drunken Fist. 
Most of these styles in of themselves deserve dedicated videos, so I won't do them the disservice of trying to mash it all together here, but the one I aim to discuss the most here is the one most predominantly featured in Baki, Shaolin Kung Fu, but first I have to make an important delineation between two types of a style of Kung Fu. That's right, most styles of Kung Fu, out of the thousands of styles that there are, are practiced in two different ways depending on geographical location, which also decides which styles are practiced where for the most part. Before going any further, I've got to explain the difference between Northern Style Kung Fu and Southern Style Kung Fu. Northern styles are any styles of Kung Fu that originate from north of the Yangtze River and is the aforementioned Long Fist style. It's the older between it and Southern style and more upright, elegant, and graceful, and possibly developed the way it did, emphasizing kicks, because the inhabitants of rocky northern China tend to be taller. The younger style, Southern style, comes from the warmer, more varied environments south of the Yangtze. They're typically more fluid and tend to use smaller concealed weapons more, have more aggressive stances that primarily use boxing and low kicks for more power, less body movement, and to target the legs and groin for kicks, and everything above the neck for punch. In short, Northern Kung Fu focuses more on kicking in upright stances and positions, while Southern Kung Fu focuses on deep stances, more powerful strikes, and less kicking. But why? Well, Southern China is made mostly of swamps, woods, and muddy terrain, and has wild animals and pirates, whereas Northern China is more open. Southern style is built for its shorter practitioners and for defense against its hostile environment, though Northern China having a lower population could mean more bandits. There's also the fact that Northern style uses weapons more, making kicking the best unarmed strike option. The lower stances in striking from the south could also be from their large naval combat emphasis at the time, with styles like Wing Chun being a good example of that. That's why, when we see Retsu fighting, his best, most impressive techniques among his general fighting outside of named techniques are kicks. Retsu favors kicks because he's potentially from the Jilei Temple and Heilongjiang. Heilongjiang is in Harbin, which is about as north as you can get, so Retsu's Byaku Rinji Kenpo is northern style kung fu. Speaking of Byaku Rinji, let's talk a bit about the styles we see in Grappler Baki since this is a Grappler Baki Styles Explained video. First, I wanted to give a quick shout out to the amazing passion and detail Itagaki Kisuke has for his representation of Kung Fu. We always get to see Retsu practicing his fundamentals, such as Zanzuang, one of the most basic Qigong exercises in Kung Fu, a simple stance to help strengthen your body and regulate your breathing, but one so intrinsically tied to the start of one's Kung Fu journey, a Sing Yi practitioner named Wang Zheng Zai created an entire system of Kung Fu based on Zanzuang called Yi Quan, which we actually see Yujiro use on Baki in their fight. It's nice to know that, for all his stances and styles and techniques and even those of other kung fu practitioners, Retsu, and by extension Itagaki, pays proper respect to the fundamentals of kung fu. As for the Kaios, in Grappler Baki we have several characters that are referred to as Kaios, or Hai Wang in their native Chinese, which translates to a Neptune or a Sea King, a title that represents the fact that the owner is a master of their respective style of kung fu. I couldn't find any such title in real life, so I think it's just something created in Baki to denote the foremost master of each style of kung fu shown, but I wouldn't be surprised if I'm wrong and it's at least based on something from real life. Now, let's take a look at an interesting style of kung fu featured in Grappler Baki, Yokaio's Kongo Ken, also known as Diamond Fist Kung Fu or Jin Gang Quan. So as far as I could tell for Kongo Ken, the only thing I could find was a large heavy iron ring used for training by Karateka, but when translating from Japanese to English and Chinese, I got results. Not to be confused with Jin Gang Quan, or Warrior Guards Boxing, Jin Gang Quan, or Diamond Fist, is a seemingly southern style of kung fu developed by a Shaolin monk to help elderly monks practice kung fu in the monasteries. That's honestly about all I could find about it. I could find quite a bit of footage that seemed to at least be similar to Yokaio's Kongo Ken, Southern style, so low kicks, boxing, and emphasis on elbows, but I'm not sure whether or not the main shtick of Kongo Ken, their body conditioning, is in Jin Gang Quan. If there's not any specific emphasis on body conditioning, I'd have to guess it's taken from iron body conditioning. But let's look a little closer at Yo's martial arts to see if the fighting we see against Dorian is what we see in Jin Gang Quan. We see Yo begin the fight by leaping into Pu Bu with his guard resembling multiple different hand positions in the Tai Bagua swimming dragon forms, such as Dark Palm, the Erupting Palm, the Rain Palm, and the Chi Palm. Obviously this would be mainly generic Kung Fu and Bagua, but nothing that would lead me to say that it's not Jin Gang Quan. 
He then follows with a Zen Zhao, or the Earthquake Stomp, a stomping technique used to generate a burst of power in many different Kung Fu styles, but famous in particularly Baji Quan, and he proceeds to unleash a plethora of kicks, hand strikes, and elbows, all of which we see in some way in Jin Gang Quan, but not particularly so. We see a Quan into an Elbow Quan Bei combo, with that same side double strike being a trademark of Kung Fu, into another elbow, and finishing by looping his leg up and side kicking Dorian's throat, with that looping of the leg being another staple of Kung Fu kicks, very similar to Savat kicks. We then see two single knuckle pressure point strikes and a groin kick, all but confirming Kogoken's southern style roots, and a horizontal show Dao. Dorian tries to maybe counter with a straight punch, but Yo uses an ox horn or crane beak strike to parry, and launches a back kick directly into Dorian's sternum with his garden what appears to be Tornado Palm. Then he finishes with a leg sweep and a face stomp. It's hard to say for sure that Jin Gang Quan is actually Kongo Ken's inspiration, but they at least seem to use similar techniques under both southern styles of Shaolin Kung Fu. As for the conditioning, honestly couldn't even find anything like the Kongo Ken Waterfall Kaio test in Jin Gang or Iron Body. However, it bears a striking similarity to Karate and Shintoism's Takegyo meditation, though Takegyo is more about meditating and performing kata under the pressure of the freezing cold deluge of water, whereas the Kongo Ken Kaio test is more about being hit by anything floating down the river and falling down the waterfall, like rocks and logs, and withstanding it as a test of your conditioning, though it's also worth mentioning that as for the Ken and test, being able to tank a cannon shot to the stomach, not only is it possible, a man named Frank Richards back in the 20s did it multiple times as a performance act. Another very interesting style of Chinese martial arts, this one not being based on Shaolin Kung Fu, is used by one of the few non kaio Chinese martial artists, Ron Shobun and his Ei Kenpo or the Quick Draw Fist Law. While Ei Kenpo doesn't appear to be a real style of martial arts, it is just an unarmed version of one that is, the Japanese martial art of Iaijutsu and Iaido. Iaijutsu and Iaido are the martial arts of drawing a sword, attacking with it, and sheathing it all in one motion. The art fundamentally consists of three parts. Nukitsuke, or drawing the weapon, cutting, or Kiritsuke, potentially Chipuri, cleaning the weapon, and Noto, sheathing the weapon. It started in the 1500s when the art was created by Hayashizaki Jinosuke Shigenobu under the school of Shime Muso Ryu. In the 1600s, Hasegawa Ishin, the seventh leader of the school, renamed the school to Muso Jikiden Ishin Ryu and improved the style, but only after Nakayama Hakudo from a brother school, Muso Shinden Ryu, renamed it Iaido after World War II, did it become what it is today. That said, it's entirely possible that Ei is much older, as katana have existed since the Nara period from 710 to 794 AD, and that type of technique could be that old, but under a different name, or it could be much younger, as the first verified use of the term Ei Jutsu was made in connection to Izasa Choi Saien now, founder of the school Tenshin Shoden Katori Shinto Ryu. Regardless, Ei Kempo's connection to Kung Fu is a tenuous one, but the Shaolin Staff Manual contains two stances, Stance 49, Shin Emperor Straddle Sword, and Stance 55, Single Overturn Hand, and those stances in tandem look strikingly like holding a sheathed sword by your side, and then quickly drawing the sword to attack. Even down to the name of the initial stance, Shin Emperor Straddle Sword. In any case, with what we see of the martial art, we can extrapolate several things. First off, the way the style is pulled off is simply by punching from the waist. Not only is this something done in many styles of kung fu that transferred over to many other styles of martial arts, but it's also got its advantages, like making it more difficult for an opponent to keep track of your hands for the purposes of dodging strikes. There is the problem of your hands being lowered reducing your effective defense, but if you apply the quick draw used for striking to defense as well, there shouldn't be any problem, as it is just a game of how fast you can get your hands to your face, and games of speed are where quick draw excels. Punching from the waist, as explained in Baki, would also help your quick draw, as biomechanically speaking, to punch from the waist, you'd need to swivel your hips to take your pocket off of your hand, and that hip swivel is also already necessary to generate force for the punch. That's also going to generate a lot more power, as it's engaging a lot more of your musculature, and if done correctly, won't leave you as open as everyone would have you believe. As demonstrated by Mike Tyson, Boss Rutan, and as discussed by the Ravenswood Academy. Go check them out, a lot of good martial arts stuff there. As for everything else we see, while Nukite is typically associated with karate, came from Kung Fu, specifically their Chao Choi, so the spear hand technique that Ron uses checks out for being Kung Fu. Another fun and interesting thing we see Ron do is the one-finger bridge, 
particularly while he's blocking this overhead hammer fist from Oliva. A signature move of Hunga from its Three Extensions exercise, the One Finger Bridge represents the name of the first emperor of the Ming Dynasty and the death of the last emperor, the One Finger Zen Quan, Siolum Temple, anti-Qing rebels of Hung Mun society and their secret signs, the ultimate art of the One Finger Zen, and so on. But why use it for a block? Well, simply put, it causes all the muscles in the forearm to tense, allowing for better rigidity. Hence how thin as a rake Ron could one arm block a downward swing from Mr. Helicopter Lifter over here, through sheer skill and technique over raw power. Another cool technique we see used is the 180 degree sidekick. This kick is incredibly common in Kung Fu, and we even get to see Liu from Kengen Omega do it, as well as Ron's double kick, but I'll be honest, try as I might, I couldn't find a name for it. I've seen dozens of examples of it, but the most I can tell you is that it's a Northern Shaolin technique, big shocker there, and apparently it's from Praying Mantis, or at least it's in Praying Mantis, which makes sense since just after that move, we see him perform what appears to be a Praying Mantis fist-styled uppercut, which I absolutely adore for some reason. Regardless, everything we see from Ron appears to be an accurate representation of Kung Fu, even though he only has two fights in the series. Now that we've discussed the styles few often seen, we have to discuss the most well-known and well-represented style of Kung Fu, Byaku Rinji Kenpo, or Bailin Temple Boxing. Another contender for the home of Byaku Rinji Kenpo, being that the name quite literally means Bailin Temple Boxing, is the Bailin Temple, a temple that's no longer active in real life and serves more as a culture preservation site from what I could tell. It's another northern Shaolin temple, so that checks out but it definitely seems like this is maybe a what-if of if it was still an active temple with access to all the original Shaolin texts and techniques. Now, Retsu has mastered the entirety of all 4,000 years of Chinese martial arts. So before examining his techniques, since they may be from styles outside of Byaku Rinji, let's quickly take a look at Ryu Kaio, his master, Dorian Kaio, his senior, and a special third inclusion. So we only see Ryu Kaio use two moves, one of which being a back kick, but this strike seems interesting. While I couldn't find a kung fu source for this technique, in Goshen Jutsu Karate, an American-based style of Okinawan Karate with a strong Chinese martial arts influence, this technique is referred to as the Chicken Head Strike, or Washiken Uchi, a finger strike used to crush the opponent's eyes. Seeing as that appears to be Ryu's target, and this technique is from a style with a heavy kung fu influence, I'd be willing to bet that that's exactly what we're looking at here. Taking a look at someone with a couple more fights in Byaku Rinji, we have Dorian. As it stands, Dorian is currently in a state of mental disrepair, practicing Mabu, or Horse Stance, a fantastic stance present in most if not all Kung Fu styles for stability in a fight, or training the leg muscles and core in exercise. But even before we knew he was a Kaio, his stances gave away his Kung Fu background. For example, we see Dorian on several occasions attack with two limbs simultaneously on the same side of his body, a trademark of Kung Fu, particularly Long Fist. Another example of a double attack using limbs on the same side is the Double Punch, a move seen in many traditional styles that harkens back to Kung Fu that's even included in Kure style. The sides can either be a punch and a kick with the left arm and leg or right arm and leg, a double punch, or a flying drop kick. Which leads us to our third special mystery Byaku Rinji practitioner, Shinshinkai Karate Master Katsumi Orochi. After having Retsu's arm transplanted onto him to replace his lost arm, be it through Retsu's spirit watching over him, Retsu's muscle memory, or a combination of both, Katsumi somehow learned Chinese martial arts despite not knowing any. During his first fight with Retsu's arm, after allowing Shishimaru the Sumotori to gain too much of an advantage over him after allowing him some breathing room to see what he's got, and inadvertently putting himself in a pinch, Katsumi subconsciously struck Shishimaru with a single knuckle strike and flash KO'd him to stop his advance. That shouldn't be that out of the norm, as Karate has the Ipon Ken, a single knuckle strike used to hit pressure points, except in this instance, it wasn't Ipon Ken. It was a single knuckle strike that Katsumi did not know. This single knuckle strike is a Chinese kung fu technique known as the Phoenix Eye Fist, which serves the same purpose as Ipon Ken and may even be where it originates from, but the formation of the fist is clearly and distinctly different. After exchanging with more kung fu and even dropping into Retsu's signature stance, which is undoubtedly an actual stance, he then performs a flying drop kick, which as we mentioned before, is the bottom side double strike as opposed to the left and right sides being the punch and kick, and the top side being the double punch. 
Katsumi opts to end the fight with karate, so that's about the extent of what we see, but we still have one more Kung Fu Byaku Rinji rep to examine, the man of the fist himself, Retsu Kayo. For his first signature technique, Spinning Lotus, shocker, but I couldn't find anything about it. That said, it's not out of the realm of possibility, as it's unorthodox grappling, which is common in Kung Fu, and it's both nearly certainly disabling and possibly lethal, which makes sense in a martial art used in real, live combat. I did some research to see if it was possible to break someone's neck like that, and by all accounts, it's a reasonable conclusion to the technique. You're locking the person's head and neck in place, and proceeding to drop your entire body weight into twisting their neck, and then using that momentum to swing through for a total 360 degree twist. This isn't your granddad's Hollywood neck snap with the hands from behind, this is measured, twitch fast, and tons of force. It's unlikely to kill, as we see in Grappler Baki, where Sergei Taktarov, based on former UFC fighter Oleg Taktarov, survives the attack, However, it should, by all rights, almost guarantee that the target is paralyzed from the neck down permanently. The only way it would kill is if the bone shards from the break sever the brainstem, and this doesn't appear to have that level of force, but unless there's a special dislocation trick to it instead of a full-on break, this isn't a move people should just be getting back up from. Another technique from Balin Kwan that I couldn't find a real-life equivalent for is the Invisible Squash, but a technique that blinds the opponent and potentially at range is invaluable, as it can of course obscure the target's vision, but also disorient and shock them, allowing for an opening on a blinded opponent which could potentially decide a fight. I'm not sure if blowing on someone's face would have the same effect or range, but it would probably throw them off, you could do it while protecting yourself, and it could confuse them into an opening at least. For the last of Retsu's techniques that are either from Grappler Baki or techniques based on real concepts, we have his foot skill technique and Shao Li. For his shocking foot skills, I couldn't find a kung fu technique that grappled or punched with the feet, but the idea of grappling with one's toes isn't so far-fetched. The existing wiring in our feet should allow us similar dexterity and strength with our toes as our fingers, but we simply don't use our toes like that often enough, unlike our ape ancestors. With proper training, I don't see why a person wouldn't be capable of doing some of the things Retsu does with his feet, but I'm not aware of any specific correlation to Chinese martial arts. As for Shao Li, I talked about this at lengths in my combat clarification on Shao Li, go watch that for a more in-depth analysis, but the idea of relaxing to mitigate damage is one that's at the root of most all defense in Chinese martial arts, and just as they demonstrate in Grappler Baki, paramedics have a saying, babies and drunks bounce, others break. Due to the relaxation of the baby and or drunk, they're able to absorb the impact of the kinetic energy and allow for it to travel through them harmlessly, like the famous story of the guy who lived in a trailer with his mother, got caught in a tornado that tore the door off of the trailer and smashed a potted plant into his head, knocking him out, and flung him some exorbitant distance away through the air where he woke up several football fields away with just a couple scrapes and bruises. Now I don't know if anything on that level exists in Chinese martial arts, or at all, but most styles seem to tend to try to relax through or dodge a strike rather than meeting it head on. Now for the three very real techniques we see displayed wonderfully in Baki, the Sunke or the one inch punch, the Musunke or the zero inch punch, and Crushing Fist or Beng Quan. Sunke and Musunke are incredibly powerful close range southern style strikes, within one inch and zero inches of room respectively, that use Fa Jin to generate power in place of how a strike traditionally does so. This strike was developed because of the extremely close style in which Chinese fighters usually engaged, chaining together several muscle groups. These martial artists could generate an explosion of tremendous power completely untelegraphed within an inch or less of available room to strike. In actuality, the power of a Sunke strike has varied greatly in real life. From eyewitness testimony from Benny Urquidez, the father of American full contact kickboxing, saying that Bruce Lee, a 140 pound man, could send a 240 pound man sailing through the air, to a Mythbusters episode showing that a trained Sunke only has about half of the power of a fully wound up punch, to Shaolin monk Shi Yang Ming doing 1.7 times the damage of a 30 mile per hour car crash with his Sunke on Stan Lee's Superhumans. Regardless, it's safe to say that whether you're sending people flying like Retsu, or only landing a half-power punch, doing so in what amounts to clinch range is still mighty impressive, doubly so as it's quite difficult to defend yourself in clinch range. 
With an even more efficient transfer of kinetic energy through the body, one could even produce the same results with their fist touching the target in the form of the musunke, the zero-inch punch. I particularly enjoy that this is seen as an evolution of Sunke from Retsu, as the greater mastery he gained over the ability to use Fajin and produce these explosions of power through the quick snapping and tensing of muscles in a chain that allows for a rapid buildup and transfer of force, the less room he'd actually need to use for his strike. Were he to be grabbed, he could just as easily launch a Musunke to the face, chin, or stomach of the attacker, and it would feel as though he had just launched a straight from normal striking range. In theory, he could do this consecutively at a speed as fast as he could relax and tense his arm. And let me tell you, dozens of full power punches consecutively back to back would knock anyone out. The last thing I want to discuss with Retsu's techniques is his crushing fist, or Ben Quan. Throughout the series, it's said that Retsu has mastered the entirety of Chinese martial arts, so every single style across all 4,000 years, I would assume. And we see evidence of that when we see things like this, when he takes the iconic stance of Baji Quan, and likely other instances where he shows off his plethora of kung fu styles. But Ben Quan is the first time we've seen Retsu name the kung fu style he was using, when he used it to semi-successfully counter Pickle's forward-leaning tackle. It's a fist of Sing Yi Quan specifically, and works almost exactly as described in Baki. The primary goal of Crushing Fist is to strike an opponent using momentum. Legs are to be kept bent so that the compression can be used for the strike. Strike comes up diagonally from the rear foot for better transfer of power when driving up from the ground. And bam, you got your strike. What's particularly impressive is that Retsu uses everyone's momentum. He uses Crushing Fist as a counter, which is a fantastic way to use this technique. He uses his momentum to drive his fist into Pickle's face at the moment of impact from Pickle's charge causing Pickle's face to take on the energy of his forward tackle and Retsu's strike, basically being hit with both Retsu's momentum and the massive amount of momentum he himself had built up. Just another example of the amazing diversity of Kung Fu. It's like a toolbox with every single tool for any kind of problem, you just need to know which tool to use and how to use it. Kung Fu, with its 4,000 years of history, hundreds of styles, and influence on philosophy and martial arts alike, is of course one of the most popular martial arts out there. Kung Fu is easily the best represented martial art in fiction, and it's been immortalized through just about every medium possible. In comic books, Kung Fu has always been a go-to martial arts for heroes and villains alike. With the likes of Iron Fist and Shang-Chi being some of Marvel's best martial artists, and Richard Dragon, Lady Shiva, Bronze Tiger, and Batman being some of the foremost representations of Kung Fu in comics. There's also no shortage of TV shows and movies with Kung Fu, being that Kung Fu movies is an entire genre of movie that pretty much defined an era, like the Warrior TV show, the multiple versions and reboots of Kung Fu, Into the Badlands, Wu Assassins, The Legend of Bruce Lee, and many wuxia shows, or Chinese fantasy genre, as well as movies like Bruce Lee's works, like his most famous Enter the Dragon, Jackie Chan's movies like The Fantastic Drunken Master, Donnie Yen's incredibly popular Ip Man movies, and even historical movies like The Grandmaster, a movie detailing the real-life relationship between Bruce Lee and Ip Man. So we have kung fu superheroes using forms just like how they were drawn in manuals so long ago to save the day in comics, live-action movies and TV shows to show off the impressive movements of Kung Fu in all their grace and glory in real life, and of course video games to allow us the feeling of being a Kung Fu master, to allow us to use all the different awesome moves of all the different styles from over 4,000 years of Chinese martial arts, like with the Sing Yi Quan of Dead or Alive's Gen Fu and Elliot, Tekken's Wang Jin Rei and Michelle and Julia Chang, that being Sing Yi Liu He Ba Fa and Sing Yi Quan, or one of my favorite styles of Kung Fu, Ba Ji Quan, by playing the legendary Akira Yuki from Virtua Fighter, shout out to Tetsu Zanko, Tekken's Leo Kleisen and Michelle and Julia Chang, and Koroko from Dead or Alive, among many others. Second shout out to Style Select, go watch their Ba Ji Quan video, or even one of my favorite styles of all time, Ji Kun Do, with Jan Lee from Dead or Alive, Li Chao Lan and Marshall and Forest Law from Tekken, and Sarah and Jackie Bryant from Virtua Fighter, but anime and manga, in my humble opinion, do it the best. 
Manga like Kenji, one of the OG kung fu manga and the best manga about Baji Kwan ever, Dragon Ball to some small, minor, practically insignificant degree, Ranma, Kenichi with dozens of kung fu styles and a major kung fu character in the form of Kensei Ma, and his dozens of styles of kung fu like Tai Chi and Baji Kwan and Bagua Zhang, of course all the kung fu shown and included in Tough and Batuke, Kengen with Nikaido Ren, his Heavenly Wolves, and many more in Kengen Omega like Liu Dongchen or the Wu Clan, and the absolute GOAT of Chinese martial arts, the Kaios of Baki, particularly Retsu and Kaku, allow for us to experience Kung Fu without the restrictions of real-life TV shows and movies have, without the focus on things other than martial arts that most comics have, and without the confines of every fighting game character having to play a role or serve some kind of gameplay purpose. We get the exact moves as recorded in manuals, we get the unbridled power of kung fu at its height, and we get it, more often than not, on a superhuman scale. Other than the control that games give you, manga and anime are just as good at or even better than most all other mediums that display kung fu in most, if not all, regards be it the powerful rooted boxing of Southern style, or the fluid graceful kicks of Northern style, Grappler Baki has done a fantastic job of recreating real styles of kung fu on pages of manga, or creating brand new styles of kung fu based on styles or concepts from Chinese martial arts. With millions of techniques, thousands of substyles, and hundreds of styles over the course of 4,000 years of history, representing kung fu in its entirety is no easy task. But through Retsu and other Chinese martial artists, Itagaki Kisuke has done this Herculean task and done so with the respect and proficiency to perfectly encapsulate every stancer technique taken to scroll or parchment. Thank you all so much for watching. Next combat clarification, should we hit the like goal of 50 likes within a week on this video, is our first ever Kengen Styles Explained video for the most famous martial arts style in Kengen, the Nico style. Special thanks to Default Set for the recommendation for last video Shinshinkai Karate and this video's 4000 Years of Chinese Martial Arts. Remember to like the video if you guys enjoyed it, and let me know in the comments what you guys think about Kung Fu and Kung Fu and Grappler Baki. Be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you guys want to know when the Nico style video comes out, or if you want to keep up with any future projects. I'm Red Fox, the Emperor of YouTube, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.